Hello and welcome to ICAW Business, Technology and Finance. This is chapter number one. And in chapter number one, we're actually going to cover four main areas. We're going to start off by looking at what an organisation is. We're then going to spill that out into a slightly different definition to talk about what an actual business is. Then we're going to look at the business in more detail. We'll have a look at the stakeholders within a business and we'll have a look at the objectives that those stakeholders have and how those objectives of the stakeholders then drive the objectives of the business that the stakeholders are stakeholders within. Now, as a generic overview of an organisation, an organisation has got four key elements. Remember, what we're looking at here is multi-choice questions as the norm. So we, as soon as I say there's four things here, that now means you've got the potential for a multi-choice question on this. So what we're looking at is a social arrangement which is controlled somehow, You've got collective goals for everybody within this social arrangement. And then you've got a boundary separating those within the arrangement and those outside the arrangement. Now that's all very wishy-washy. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these things in a little bit more detail. So we're going to take each of these four different component parts and look at them in more detail. Now the social arrangement means that our entity, our organisation, has got a social reason for being. So there is a social issue here. Now the organization itself is comprised of people and because it's comprised of people, it means that those people will interact with each other. There's the social interaction which will allow for this social entity to exist. And it's really important because this is the first step along your trail to potentially becoming man managers. You need to understand that different types of peoples will interact in different ways in different circumstances. You need to work out what circumstances you want to put into place and then work out how to make those people interact in the way you want them to. That's about the idea of getting what you need from these object from these individuals to achieve your objectives. And what that now means is we can talk about having goals and our goals will be the objectives of the organisation. So our goals will be the objectives of the organisation. These are the things we are trying to achieve. Now, when I say we, it's the members of the organisation that are trying to achieve this. So it's the members of the organisation who are trying to achieve this. OK, that sort of makes sense to me. How are we going to achieve it? We're going to achieve it because somebody will be, will be in control to some extent and that person in control will structure the activities of everybody within the organisation. So whoever's in control will structure the activities of everybody within the organisation to make sure that we can achieve our goals. So these deliberately structured activities allow for us to have a goal-directed set of activities which then allow us to achieve our objectives. The organisation itself has got what we call a permeable boundary. And what this means is the boundary says that you can now distinguish between persons who are inside the organisation, who will become part of these structured activities, and those who are external to the organisation become part of the external environment and will not necessarily be part of our structured activities. Everybody within the organisation will be expected to be trying to achieve our objectives, our goals. So everybody within the organisation must be trying to achieve these objectives or goals. So why would we bother having an organisation? Well, the reasons we would have an organisation will include things such as you can overcome individuals' limitations. For instance, if you had two individuals, one's a tax specialist, one's an auditing specialist, that now means that, that one, the first person who's the audit specialist doesn't understand tax. They can now have additional input, which means that the tax stuff is correct. It allows for specialisation because what it does is it allows the level of work to increase... So the more people we have on board, the amount of work we can deal with will increase. It also then allows individuals to become very specialist in very specific areas. It saves time because these specialists can do things much more quickly. It also means that I can accumulate knowledge because it means that the specialists will know how to deal with something and they'll get lots of experience about it. That knowledge can then be shared between other members of our organisation. So there's the accumulation and the sharing of our knowledge as well. Now, within business organisations, and I'm, I'm just talking about business organisations, not social organisations. So in a business organisation which has some sort of objective, not a sports club or anything like that, the objectives that we have will usually be based on a profit-making objective or a non-profit-making objective. Now, the organisation itself 
So the organization itself, if it's a profit-making organization, then we need to look at stakeholder groups and look at what type of objectives they have. If it's a non-profit-making group, we need to look at stakeholder groups and try to work out what type of objectives they want. So what we're looking to do here in both types of organizations is understand our stakeholders, understand what our stakeholders want. And once we don't know that, we can then formalize our own objectives and our own goals based on our stakeholders' objectives. Now, the two different types of organizations we're looking at will have potentially different types of stakeholder groups. And because of that, they will have different types of objectives. So because they've got different stakeholder groups, they have different types of objectives. If I start off with a profit-making organization, a profit-making organization will have objectives, including things such as increasing share price, paying dividends. If I'm a non-profit-making organization, my key objectives might be feeding people or providing water to different parts of the world. So if we were to think about a profit-making or a non-profit-making organization, some of these objectives can be based upon the stakeholders' requirements. And what we're looking at now is those stakeholder requirements will give my organization the requirement to do certain things. The requirement to do certain things becomes my business's objectives. So my organization's objectives come about because of my stakeholders' objectives. And these objectives can be split down into financial and non-financial objectives. So if I'm looking at financial objectives first, the type of financial objectives we could be looking at would include things such as maximizing shareholder wealth, which means increasing dividends, increasing share price. We could be looking at doing these things by increasing our overall profit figures. We also have non-financial objectives as well. Non-financial objectives tend to have a much longer term time frame around them. So you can be looking at quality, building up goodwill with customers through customer satisfaction, a low environmental impact, and you can cross references through to sustainability. We're going to look at that in just a second. Market and product diversification reduces levels of risk because if one market falls over, the rest of my business can still continue. Now, I said that we we're going to talk about sustainability. Before we can get into sustainability in, in any level of detail, I need to give you some definitions and allow you to understand the basics. Sustainability is all about ability to meet the needs of our present without compromising the ability of future generations. That's really important. It's all about utilizing natural resources. So it's all about utilizing natural resources, but not using so much of the natural resources, such as land and trees and anything else, that the future generations will now not be able to survive. So we need to do it in such a way that we maximize long-term survival of the organization and the planet. So it's all about driving everything towards the same objective. Now, business sustainability is all about how the business does this. And then corporate sustain sustainability is all about the commitment that we're going to make to our stakeholders to do this. Businesses' objectives will always come from stakeholders. What we're now saying within this sustainability and corporate responsibility area is one of the key stakeholder groups is the planet and the natural resources that it provides. So corporate sustainability is all about a commitment to a key stakeholder, which is the planet and its natural resources. That now means that the business itself, the corporate responsibility becomes the business itself becoming responsible for how we utilize natural assets. So it's all about how we utilize natural assets. And what we're going to say is, if we are sustaining the use of these natural assets, it means that the natural resources will be consumed to such an extent this year that there's still sufficient of them left to carry on in business next year. A great example of this would be if you use paper or toilet tissue and such, when you cut down trees to actually make the paper or the toilet tissue, you plant another tree. Or how about you plant two trees? Because what that now means is you get some goodwill by having some great marketing publicity and in a number of years time, you now have twice as much resources. So you can actually use this commitment to sustainability as a way to increase marketing value and therefore to increase longer term value within the business as well. 
This can be fantastic, absolutely amazing. Now, the UN got involved in this and the UN came up with their global go goals for sustainable development. And their three global goals are to try to end poverty across the entire world, fight inequality and then stop climate change. What then cascades out from this is our business's goals. And our business goals is now to promote sustainable growth. So this idea is not, not to stop making profits. The idea here is to continue to make profits, but to make profits in a longer term way with much more consideration to these three objectives. So our business goals is now to promote sustainable growth. It's designed or we're supposed to promote Full employment, so full employment and decent work for all people. So we're supposed to be making sure that as we make our profits, we will utilize natural resources in a more considerate fashion. We will then spread the wealth that we're creating in a more equitable fashion. So equitable here meaning fair. And we're going to stop destroying the planet, which means that we can make profits in the super long term. All three of these objectives just make common sense to any type of business manager. Now, I'm going to move away from this because this is just one stakeholder group. This is an important stakeholder group, but it's only the one stakeholder group. The next thing I need to look at is other stakeholder groups. I need to understand who all of my stakeholders are and what they want. The stakeholders and their objectives is what will drive my business. So the stakeholders and their objectives is what's going to drive my business. So I need to understand who they are, what they want, and then I need to identify whether I can do what they want. So can I satisfy all of their needs at the same time? Now, we have a way of categorizing stakeholder groups, which could quite happily crop up in part of a, a question. Stakeholders will be split down into primary or secondary stakeholders. Now, primary stakeholders will be shareholders or partners or the proprietor as an owner. People who get directly their wealth from the performance of the company, if you will. You then also have secondary stakeholder groups such as directors, employees, etc., etc. It starts becoming a little bit wider. So the secondary stakeholder group gets a little bit wider. The business objectives that we generate can then be split down into primary objectives and then secondary objectives based on the stakeholder groups we're trying to keep happy. And I'm using that loose term trying to keep happy very specifically. So our primary groups, we're looking to increase their wealth. So increasing shareholder wealth. Bear that in mind when you come to your financial management paper in year two's papers, because um, we focus quite heavily on increasing shareholder wealth there. Secondary stakeholders will then have secondary objectives to make sure we keep them happy, such as increasing market share, increasing quality of our goods. And then you can also think about the UN and you can have UN objectives fitting in here to the secondary groups as well. So what this now means is in terms of the organization itself, the organization will have certain types of objectives, which will include things such as profits. And satisficing is different from satisfying. Satisficing is not a typo. Satisfying is when you make somebody completely happy with everything that you've given them. Satisficing is when you give them enough to make them okay. So you think about making an adequate requirement to fulfill their needs rather than a perfect requirement to fulfill their needs. So profit satisficing is all about making sufficient profit to keep the primary stakeholders happy, so to keep my shareholders happy, but at the same time, I can now keep other stakeholder groups happy as well. Now, moving on from these objectives, and as a direct move on from these directives, these uh, objectives, what we've got is a mission. Now, the mission of the business is to make sure that the organization functions properly within society. So this is to make sure that our business or our organization functionally functions properly within society. We've got to look at potentially having a mission statement. So we'll have a mission statement, which is an expression of all of these various different component parts, which allows us to see how we fit into society. So any type of mission that we have will have four key elements. The purpose is why are we here? 
Whose benefit are we trying to be here for? The strategy is all about the operational logic, i.e. what are we going to do and how are we going to do it? So what are we going to do and then how are we going to do it? We'll come back to that later on within a very, very little bit of this course, but also within your second year paper BST. Policies and standards of behaviour is all about how our people are going to behave. So how does the organisation behave in certain situations? That's, that's one of the ways we measure, measure culture. And culture is absolutely critical to us here. And then culture also cascades into what we call values. Values also allows me to think about things such as ethics and an ethical belief system. Ethics are absolutely essential to us as individuals, as a profession, and within these exams as well. Now, you may have heard the mnemonic SMART. Every single time you have a business objective, any type of objective, every single type of objective should meet this SMART mnemonic. So we've got this wonderful mnemonic SMART, which talks to me about business objectives. And it says that every single objective, not just the business objectives, but every objective should be specific. So you know exactly what you need to do. It should be measurable. You can determine whether you've done it or not. Achievable. You think it's possible that we can do this thing. Relevant. Achieving this will help me achieve my longer term objectives. Time bound. There is a finite time period within which I should be hitting these objectives. And if I do that, that then gives me good performance. So it's a very, very simple mnemonic, this smart, really, really important one. Now, this brings us up very nicely to the end of chapter number one. And what I would like you to do here, guys, is make sure you're happy with everything within this chapter first. Have a go at the questions at the end of the chapter. And once you're happy with that, then you can start thinking about having a go at chapter number two. And as we keep on trucking our way through, there's an extra online portal questions as well. And then we've got some mock exams. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'll see you all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on chapter two very soon.